amazing to imagine that. All right, I'm going to be focusing on one verse today, just one. In Sunday school class, I went through a lot of different words, and so today I'm going to focus on one verse in my message. And it will be a little bit like teaching, but I'm going to try to apply this to your lives, and I want these words to be implanted in your hearts and to, to challenge us today. So in Sunday school class, I talked about your mind and your heads. Now I'm going to be talking about our heart. So be an example for Christ. <coughs> be an example for Christ. So example, what does that mean? What does the word example mean? You know, if you find something that is the same as another thing, that is an example. Don't go, don't turn to this at first. I'll have you turn to the verse we're going to focus on. But here we see in 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 21 through 23, that even hereunto were we called because Christ also suffered for us, leaving us an example that ye should follow his steps. The Bible says that Christ was an example for us, that we can copy his example. In this other verse, we see the word example again. Let no man despise thy youth. I've preached this many times. I was looking at this word and thinking about it. Despise that word. Do you know what the word despise means? I had to look down on someone. For many years, I thought it meant to hate, you know, like, as in you don't like something, you don't like the flavor of something. It's really the idea of thinking it means nothing. You know, many times deaf people say it means nothing. So let no man think that your youth is nothing. How many young people are here? Raise your hand. Young? Are you young? Raise your hand. A lot of us are young in heart. Yeah, we talked about that this morning, right? Young in heart. <laughs> Let no man think nothing of your youth. This verse is talking about, um, Paul was writing this, whatever sign you want to use for Paul, but Paul was writing to a young man named Timothy. It wasn't his son, but someone that he mentored. And so he called him his son. But he said, don't let people think that you are nothing because of your youth. And so Timothy was able, Timothy was able to correct other people, regardless of the fact that he was younger than some of the people he was teaching. But whether you're young or not, you are to be an example. So we have that word again, an example. This word example comes from the Greek word, um, you know, that was the ancient Greek that means a die that is struck. You have a coin? Any of you have coins? Anyone has one? You have one? Yeah, few, a few of you. Most of us are like, yeah, our pockets are empty. I always keep mine up here and it's a credit card now, right? Or a debit card. That's, or your phone, you know, you can use your phone to pay now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I remember we used to have to carry around all this change in our pockets and you'd walk and jingle and shake and yeah, anyway. But so coins, how are coins made? It's pretty interesting. They'll take this metal and they lay it out in thin sheets and they'll be stamped out in, stamped out. And then they get spun around to be polished and those edges will get smoothed and trimmed off and then there's a machine that actually presses the image onto the coin so the image that you see will be pressed onto the coin <laughs> or you know perhaps in the old ways you know in a long time ago, people would send an envelope. Yeah, we don't lick envelopes anymore. We just, but um, 
long ago, people would drip some wax onto their envelope and then someone would seal it with a certain insignia. And so you could know who it was from because of the insignia on the envelope. Well, God wants his die cast on your life, his symbol implanted on your hearts. And so Paul tells Timothy, don't let other people look down on you or think that you are nothing because of your youth, but you are going to grow strong in God and his example is in you. So we're going to look at several words here about the word despise. We've already talked about that. Don't look down on or don't think nothing of thy youth. Most of you are not young here. You're not. I'm sorry to say that, but, you know, some of you, maybe that was news to you today, that you're not young anymore. But um, Paul told Timothy, you are young. Now, I'm in a little bit of hot water, possibly. Many hearing people look down on deaf people, right? They think they're nothing. Is that correct? And I try to help the hearing people say, you know, deaf people are not nothing. That's a big part of my job to try to help hearing churches see the value of deaf ministries. But so now don't let people think you are nothing. <clears throat> you know, if you are a deaf person and the hearing church or hearing people can easily dismiss that and say, oh, we don't need deaf churches. You can just have an interpreter. That's good enough. Yesterday at Fantastic Saturday, I was kind of, I embarrassed some of the interpreters there because all the interpreters stood up and I said, now, if a deaf person is taught you sign, okay, now I want you deaf people to copy me. And so, you know, you, you can do this with me now. Hold up your finger and just copy me. Okay, so now I'm going to have you <laughs> say this. I said interpreting is boring, right? Is that true? It It is. So I embarrass the interpreters a little bit. And then the second sign. So go ahead and copy this one. Ready? Go ahead. But thank you to the interpreters because we do need them anyway, you know. I, I know it's easy to fall asleep when there's an interpreter up there interpreting away, but hearing people misunderstand what deaf people are all about. Why do, you know, they say, why does a, why do there need to be a deaf church and an interpreter is better? No, and we know that's not true. And I say deaf people, a deaf person needs services in his language or her language. And hearing people don't understand that. But anyway, so we see this verse that says, don't let people think you are nothing because of your youth or perhaps deafness, but be thou an example. Have God's image placed on your heart. Now we've talked about, you know, we use the sign example, but let your be thou an example of the believers in word. Yeah, I've got the right one up there. In word. Be thou an example of the believers in word. The things that you say. Many people like to play with what they say, right? A lot of young people today, they just play around. I've noticed that many older people also, they just mess around. One pastor told me, he said, at his church, um, the pastor of Paul's church said many snowbirds from northern Wisconsin, they move here in southern Wisconsin and retire. And we thought that would be great. There's more people coming to your church. He said, that's not great. It's actually a problem because they move here to retire from church. How can a Christian retire from church? So it means, oh, I'm saved, 
and I've received Christ, but now when it's time for me to retire, I get to sit back and kick back and relax, and I don't have to work hard at Christianity anymore. No, we need to have the ways that we communicate, the ways that we talk, be an example. Another word we see here is the Word of God. The Word of God, that's what this book is called. It's God's Word. Now this is God's Word. Do you believe that? I mean, is it? Yeah, uh, I don't know. It's, it's a book. No, this is God's Word. Yes, it is. And if His Word, if you have His Word, read it. We see holding fast the faithful word that he may be able by sound doctrine. Doctrine is what is contained in this word. Now, a lot of people will say, oh, a friend told me about what God said, or another person told me. You know, I mean, YouTube told me. You know, a lot of people, maybe you don't use YouTube. I use that sign for YouTube. Do you use that? Yeah, yeah, I use that. Okay. Oh, the internet told me. You know, I saw this on the internet. Uh, you can learn good things from social media. You can, really. But that's not your church. That's not your Bible. This, the Word of God. And so we need to learn to cherish that. What God says is doctrine. It's teaching. What God has put down in his word is our doctrine. And churches need to be friendly. Yes, I know today we're going to gather around and eat after the service today. But the fellowship and the friendly part is second. The first part is doctrine. Your pastor here should emphasize most of all doctrine. Some churches that I've met, some deaf churches, the Word of God is not so important to them. One church I went to before uh, they said, we can't count that you've come here. And I said, what, they can't? Well, I'm here. Oh, but you're hearing, so we can't count that you're here because you're hearing. Another church told me they asked about my children if you're, you know, they said, well, here's Deaf Church. And I said, well, where are all the kids? Oh, the kids are all in the basement. Well, what are they doing? Oh, they're watching cartoons. And I thought, what? In church? Wow. You need to teach the young people. We need to teach them to be godly young people. We need to teach them to follow God. We need to teach them to grow up and give their lives to God. You know, Brian had this, or Pastor Brian had this as an example. You were saved when you were 11, right? So he was 11 years old. And then later, when I met you, you were 18. He was young, you know. Well, inexperienced, we all were when we were young, but he had a hunger and a desire to serve God. And now he is still. And so if you start now, you have that desire to search out God, you will grow in maturity. You know, it might take 10 years, it might take 20 years, but still you will grow. So doctrine is extremely important. God's word, his doctrine is so important. Now, we also use the word, word as, you know, words that are spoken, but in communication, we talk about word. For from you sounded out the word of the Lord, not only in Macedonia and Achaia, but also in every place your faith to God word is spread abroad. So that Paul could say, when I went and explained the gospel to you in this place and people were saved, and then maybe he went and came to explain the gospel somewhere else. And they said, oh, other people already told us. Other people have already. The, so that's the idea of being the gospel, being spread abroad. This church, the name of this church is 
Oh, wait, I forgot where I am. <laughs> East Sullivan Baptist Church. That's right. East Sullivan Baptist Church. Near Deaf Church. If your church spreads the gospel to all kinds of people and they say, oh, yeah, I've heard about this church. I've heard about Jesus from this church. That's the idea of spreading abroad. <clears throat> spreading the word. Now, this is another old word here in a uh, King James word. The new King James uh, changes that, but, you know, I just traditionally use the King James version. But it says, in conversation, this word is an older word to mean your life, your way of life, the things that you say and the things that you do in your conversation. Oh, we need strong Christian people. We need Christian people who follow God and who are an example. Yesterday, we were talking about other people who are an example. Who were you talking about yesterday? Um, when you gave your testimony, yeah, you were talking about your dad, that how he was saved and his life changed and he was an example to Pastor Brian. And then um, Ted Kemp influenced Pastor Brian's dad because his life was an example. Ted Camp had a big influence on my life. You know, there are many times he would, you know, tell me I was doing things. He'd correct me and say me, you know, tell me not to do certain things. And so he was an example that I could copy. And I saw his life. I saw him live out his faith. And a lot of people watch your lives. You might not know who's watching. You know, maybe if you look at them, they turn away and they don't look at you. But, you know, they're, you might try to figure out who's watching you. But you might not ever know. But you're not going to be able to hide that. You know, people at your workplace or at your school, they're watching. Your neighbors are watching you. They're deaf. Oh, yeah, they're deaf. Oh, and they go to church too. But they always come back home and they party and they drink. And I'm, I'm not saying that's true of you, but um, people are watching you. And so Paul says, you need to be an example in your life, in your conversation. What are your goals? What are your visions? What are your dreams for life? What are your, you know, the, what are part of you, all that you do? People are watching. Now, people aren't supposed to judge you, correct? We say, don't judge me. Don't judge me. What are you looking at me for? What are you, you know, I can do what I want. Don't judge me. But actually, we all do that. Everyone does judge one another. If you have some water here, and uh, you drink some water, and you spit back into it, and you give it to someone else. And you say, no, stop judging. Just take the water, drink the water. No, you're going to say, no, I'm not going to take that water. You just spit in it. Yesterday, I had some water. And I remember I set my water next to another bottle, and I was like, wait a minute. Which one was mine? Oh, I had a blue label. Okay, that one's mine. But was I sure? I wasn't totally sure about that. So I threw them both in the trash. I used my judgment. You have to use your judgment. Now, you don't have to look down on people, but you have to be wise and careful. And in that way, you, you use your judgment. Everyone judges. And the Bible says this word, it's a very long word, the conversation word. It says, among whom also we all had our conversation, our way of living in times past. Now, if you are saved, if you have asked Christ into your life, then you have a past. You have a past if you have received Christ. Everything before Christ, all that sin is gone. That was your past. So you did have one. You had a past. Remember that God has saved you out of that past. Oh, that's amazing. 
you know, I watched my kids grow up and, um, I had my son and, you know, I looked like a angel I tried to be. I wasn't perfect because I grew up, I was a pretty good boy. I obeyed my parents. I kept the rules most of the time. But I also got in trouble. I'm not going to tell you about trouble, but I remember I got in trouble sometimes. I remember my past, the things that I did. Don't forget your past because you had one. So you used to be in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind and were by nature children of wrath. And now we have this other verse. It says that ye put off concerning the former conversation. Now, if a person has received Christ into his or her life, should that person change? Yes, the answer is yes. That person should change. That makes all the difference in the world. You know, it's kind of funny. I have a, I have a friend, Vicky. She's hard of hearing. She was born hearing, but then she quickly lost her hearing, and so she got hearing aids later on, and she learned sign later. She grew up speaking, and um, she looked like a hearing person, but she later learned to sign, and she went to a deaf school or a deaf college, and one day she was working at our ministry at Silent Word Ministries, and there's a certain place where a lot of the deaf people are working in in the office. Um, you know, I wasn't sure if this person signed or used her voice. And so she came from, you know, where a lot of the deaf people were working and she came over and I started to talk to her and she said, hang on, hang on a second. And she put on her, she put off her deaf face and said, I have to put on my hearing face. And I remember she did that. She has two different brains, her hearing brain and her deaf brain. And it's almost the same way when you are saved when you become a Christian you have to put off your old life and you put on your new life you put on Christ that's what it means to put off you set it aside the former things of your life the former ways of thinking thinking about the world and you know being driven by financial motivation I mean we need money we need money to live but that motivation that's what we put off these things are corrupt. Your former conversation is corrupt. I think like two days ago as I was packing um, next to my bed, I found something that was all full. It was corroded. And so I took that and I threw it away. I took this thing that I found next to my bed that was corrupted. It was dirty. You know, our whole world is corrupt. And now we have this verse that says, Let your conversation, your way of life, be as it becometh the gospel of Christ. It changes your life. The Bible says that you have this relationship. Your pastor, your other godly leaders can help you learn how to have this time with God. Some habits are hard to break, but you can change. I, I know um, we have that book with us about how to break sin habits. We have like a booklet, a small resource. Um, or a pamphlet, really, that says how to break sinful habits, sinful addictions, how to set those aside. And that happens by being an example. Don't let people think of you as nothing, but as you become an example, your life changes. The word charity here in this verse Honestly, a lot of people say, you know, the word charity means what? what? Do you know what that means? Charity means giving, right? Oh, you're pretty smart. Wow. Good. And yeah, a lot of people say, oh, it means love. Uh, yeah, it has the idea of love, but it's a giving 
love. It's a giving kind of love. So, you know, in um, when a child is born, you know, this happened to us. We were at the hospital with our first child. We had a daughter. And at her birth, you know, the mom was in the hospital. She's showing love to her baby. And then all of a sudden, you know, <laughs> the baby lets loose and soils the diaper. And so I'm a smart guy. I was holding the baby. And I said, okay, if you mow the grass, I'm going to change your diaper. That's what I said to my daughter when she was born. No, that's not what I said. I said, I just love you and that's enough. And, you know, the mom had just given birth and so she's mm -hmm. tired and worn out. And so my wife was watching me and I went ahead and I undid that diaper. It was, it was a doozy, but I went ahead and I cleaned it and took care of it because I loved my child. She couldn't help me. She couldn't do anything for me. So that's what charity is. It doesn't matter whether I get a return on my help. It doesn't mean that you just blow your money recklessly. But it is a giving, generous spirit that you help people because of love. Now this verse says, let all your things be done with charity. All of your life, everything that you do, is to be done with charity. It's not in a taking selfish manner, but a giving generous matter for the purpose of helping others. People need Jesus Christ. If you are giving, people will notice that. You become that example, become a different kind of person and they see that example. It says, let no man despise thy youth, but be thou, you know, don't be looked down on or thought of as nothing because of your youth, but be an example of the believers in word, in the things that you say, in your life, in charity, or in your giving, and in spirit. I saw one Christian one time, he, he surprised me, he likes to praise the Lord, but he was trying to start his car and the car wouldn't work. And so he said, he started swearing and he said, or he started walking back and forth. And he said, praise the Lord. And he like he slammed his car and hallelujah and kicked his car. And amen. I was like, wow, that you told me you were a Christian, but you're walking around with this wrong attitude. You might be saying the words, but your spirit and your attitude does not match those words. So it says, now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. That spirit has been given to us. And when the world sees the spirit of God, it's a big difference. So then also be an example in faith. Now, what do we sign for faith? Yeah, we use this, faith, the idea of trust. But I'm going to show you a different sign. I'm hearing, so I make up signs, all right? Just, I hope you don't hate me for that. And I know it's dangerous to say that, but I'm going to show you. But Fred Adams one time did this. It was, anyway. <laughs> faith means to let go. Let me give you an example. Have you ever been on a cruise? Anyone here been on a cruise before? Okay. Oh, this is the cruise class over here. This is, you guys haven't ever been one. All right. The cruise club on this side. But anyway, so a cruise is a really large ship, right? And if you were to fall, oh, it's far. I mean, you would smash into that water and you would be injured. So if a person were to fall and another person sees that, They'll throw out the life vest for you and they'll say, hold on, hold on. And so as you're there in your dazed state and you try to hold and the people are saying, hold on, we're going to save you. And so this person has to hold on. And as this person is being pulled up the side of the cruise ship, you're going to get tired and fall off again. But if you fall again, you just can't hold on. And they say, hold on. And you say, I'm trying. I can't do it. 
hold on, I'm trying. You know, okay, so we, and then they say, oh, well, how about the lifesaver? And so we throw the lifesaver out. Now get on, put that on. Okay, so you get that wrapped around you. We are going to pull you up. So just leave it and just leave it. Okay. So you don't have to hang on. You've got to trust us. All right. So this person is being jerked up, you know, slowly being pulled up, dangling there from the life preserver. So you need to sign faith this way. <laughs> this is the sign for faith. No, no I'm kidding. <laughs> but do you see the image there? Do you understand faith means it doesn't mean I'm trying. You can't, you know, get baptized or give enough money to be saved. You can't do those things. Only Jesus Christ, you can trust him. That means you let go of the baptism. You let go of your giving. You let go of these things and you trust Christ. You just dangle there in his arms because he is the one that saves you. It's not by anything that you can do and hope that you've made it. That's not it. He's the one who saves. Let him do the saving. Let him be the one to take you up. That is wonderful. It is his work. It is not your work. And that is the idea of faith that you let go. Faith also means belief. You know, it's you let your hands go. Your mind believes. So now faith is that idea of sound doctrine. So we have decided that a man is justified by faith. That means saved or made right. Saved by faith. So if you say, I want to be saved, I will do all these things so that I can be saved and then you'll pick me for my salvation, right? No, that's not how it works. He will save you. You say, will you save me? And then you just let go and you depend on him. Yesterday I told this story and there were two people, two or three people who said um, that they wanted to hear the story again. And then in uh, July at Deaf Nation World Expo, has, did any of you go to that? No, none of you went? Okay. We had a team that went to share the gospel there. Um, there were fewer people there. There were only like 5,000, I think, the numbers. You know, there have been 23,000 there in the past, but the numbers were much smaller this year. Anyway, there was a deaf couple who came and said, can I give you money? Give money to your ministry? And I was like, mm, okay, you're going to give me money to Silent Word Ministries? Sure. And we always need financial support. Sure. And I said, okay, but why would you give me money? And they said, well, I want to go to heaven. If I die, I want to go to heaven. So I'll give you money. And then that will help me go to heaven. And I said, no, 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 <laughs> no, that's, let me tell you how that's not going to work. And so I brought them over and sat them down and explained about this probably for about an hour. I talked about faith and God and Jesus and, you know, heaven and hell and what the Bible says about sin. And I went through the whole gospel. And at the end, the man said, oh, okay, I want to accept Jesus. And he was saved. And he accepted Christ as a savior. Money doesn't buy your way into heaven. Doing good things on earth doesn't buy your way into heaven. Only Jesus does that. He's the one who justifies you, makes you right. Okay, so then that's what we talked about before about how this verse we already mentioned about how your faith is already heard of all around. It's been spread around so you are rooted and built up in him. You are rooted in the Bible. You know the word of God. If people look at you and say, oh, you're nothing, you know, your, your life isn't anything. But if you are believing and learning and you're able to tell them what the Bible says, then they can say, oh, oh, you go to church? Yeah, I'm learning the Bible there. That becomes an example to others. And then purity. In charity, in spirit, in faith, in purity. You know, purity is hard today. There's so much 
it is put before you every place you go it's hard to be pure you know in the books and with people and things and in the store everywhere we see things that are impure the bible says every man that hath this hope in him the hope is that salvation purifieth himself even as he is pure our hope He's the one who saves us, but we are the ones who wash. You know, this morning you got up and you took a bath, right? You took a bath. I hope, I hope you did. I hope you took time to take care of your personal hygiene. But, you know, we take care of ourselves every day. So in the same way we get up and we pray and we ask God's spirit to help us, and that is our job. So instead of people looking down on you or saying you're not worth their time, he said, don't let people think that you're nothing because of your youth or for we being deaf here. Don't let people think you're nothing because you don't hear because you're in deaf church or because you're a Christian. Instead, be an example with the things that you say, with the way you live your life, with how you love and give with your attitude, with your dependence on God, with your faith, and with your purity. That is how you be an example for Christ. So now, yesterday, we talked about what if, that was our theme for yesterday, what if you, we, all of us here, what if we were an example to the world? Do you think that they'd take notice? Probably. According to this verse, the answer is yes. Be an example. So now, I have explained to you about this verse, and it doesn't just happen in 30 minutes. It's not a one-time thing. Remember this coin or this, you know, image here was stamped on the coin. But what happens if God stamps his image on our hearts? People are going to take notice of that. They're going to say, well, why are you like this? And you will explain, and maybe they don't like what you have to say. But maybe eventually, after they've watched you for a long time, maybe eventually they'll start to understand. I'm going to tell one more story, and then I'll be done. One pastor, a friend from college, he moved to Northwest Virginia. You know, in West Virginia, it's got that tall northern point on there. Oh, it's country out there, out in the mountains and the forest. You know, it's that's West Virginia, northern West Virginia. And um, the my friend became a pastor in a very small town. There were very few people. And he would go out to people's houses, and he'd knock on their door and invite them to church, and people did not respond well. They did not want to come to church. And after five years, he didn't have much response. Five years. And his church was so small and it was really hard to get people to come over. After five years, um, people started taking notice. And they'd say, well, Pastor Bob, you've been here for how long? And he'd say, well, I've been here about five years. And they'd say, oh, really? You've been here five years? Hmm. Well, okay, I'll come to your church. They had been watching him all this time for the last five years. He didn't know, but the people had been observing him. And finally, after five years, others started to come. God will help us be an example. Let's close in prayer. Father in heaven, this is a simple message, but Lord, you know what we need. I pray that you would help us here to live and be an example for those who are younger and for the rest of their lives. Help the older people here to decide to be an example all the way till the finish. Help us to have our faith in you that we would just let go and depend on you for our salvation. I pray that you'd help us to be an example in our attitude. To be an example to the world. We love you, and we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Did God challenge you this morning to be an example? Did Christ set an example? I really like how you explained that Christ set the example for us. He already put his example on our lives. So now we need to show it, right? You know, this verse my dad told me all the time as a teenage boy. My dad told me this all the time, and I still need that verse. All of us need this verse. Timothy was about 40 years old when he was told to be an example. All of us are still young, spiritually speaking, and we need to grow up. If God has challenged you, then in the moment we have for quiet, I want you to take time to talk with God. Ask God if you see a wicked way in me that you would help me to change, to repent, and to live for you. So I'll close in prayer, and then you may have your moment of quiet. God, I pray that you would Help us look in our hearts and see if there is an area in which we need to repent, that we would make that right with you. I pray that you would put your image, the image of Christ on us. His example would be obvious in our lives. Help us to keep it clean. Help us to wash ourselves and keep your example clean and bright in us. In Jesus' name, amen.